Finally, I just wonder, um, are any of you using any of the new technologies in your approaches to art with your patrons who are blind and vision impaired? And if you're not at this point, do you see yourselves doing so in the future? When I began working at the Guggenheim, we were mostly doing uh, just verbal description tours, and maybe my background as an artist, we started doing workshops. And one of the things that has really helped facilitate workshops with the actual gay community is that we have, um, we're really using iPads. So iPads in the gallery to bring high resolution images for people if they would like that. Um, just offering different sorts of ways to get close to the artwork, but also on an iPad we can play music on there if they wanted to incorporate sound. Um, and then within our workshops, we often have photography workshops. We've had a couple at this point. Um, where we use the iPads because there's a camera on there, there's effects on there, everything is right there. Um, so you can do everything on the iPad, which is crazy. Um, just like the future. <laughs> but, you know, so that's something that we're using. And then continuing with that, as I mentioned um, in my introduction, we just launched a multimedia guide that is on all Apple devices that you could download for free if you'd like. Um, or you can pick up at the Google then when you come to visit that offers verbal imaging tours. Um, and so that provides a self-guided experience through the museum. So you don't have to come on a tour if you want to. I actually never go on tours when I go to museums. I'm like the worst museum goer ever. And I like to just go by myself. And so now we're offering that as another way to engage with works of art. We also have gotten some iPads and it's really opened up a whole new world. Not only to, I mean, one of the things we often end up doing is bringing music into the galleries because it's such a, it's such an amazing bit of contextual information to add to any conversation about a work of art. Um, and also just having the ability to call things up at a moment's notice. You know, if a conversation tends to go in a certain direction, if people have questions, just the fact that the internet is all around us and we don't do have access to that information to images, to sounds, to songs. Um, it's something that's really enhanced our tours a lot. Um, and a lot of our educators honestly just use their phones with speakers. We have little speakers that we can play music, play interviews, things that artists have said, you know, those little snippets of information coming straight from the artist. Now they usually say it better than we do, and it's nice to hear it right from the artists themselves. Well, we are also, we're beginning to experiment and use iPads in the galleries increasingly, um, and we've been talking about uh, using them in the drawing class and seeing the drawing. We don't have enough of them yet <laughs> to do that, but we are going to be trying that, I hope, in the near future. Um, and one thing that we're doing um, as a, a kind of project in the fall, um, Access at the Met and our digital media, um, media lab uh, is collaborating with Parsons, the new school for design and technology, on a collaborative class where graduate students will be focusing on assistive technology and solving access challenges in art museum galleries for people with specific types of disabilities, including people who are blind or have low vision. Um, and the idea is really to just begin their thinking. We don't expect them to create a final, you know, marketable product by the end of one semester, but the idea is to really get them thinking about um, problem solving uh, for in thinking of people with disabilities using the gallery and accessing works of art, making works of art, and, and how we might um, you know, be creative with technology to bridge the gaps and make things um, work well, help people connect with art better. Pamela and I have been talking a lot about this because um, so many of our students seem to bring iPads into the class and maybe warm up on their iPad um, before class begins. So, you know, we, we want to um, think about a way to use that in our program, and one of the things that came up for us was um, make it part of a multimedia project or multimedia drawing. Our class is specifically about drawing. So maybe artwork can be done on the um, computer um, generated as a source material, maybe something up in the gallery where we're imaging or experiencing up there printing it out and then maybe recombining it with another drawing material and enlarging it onto another form of paper or cardboard, whatever it is we're working with. And part of it is Pamela and I come from a very tactile background in painting and drawing and we 
appreciate so much holding the material in our hands and feeling the paper and having that connection to it that I don't, I, I don't know at this point if we would be able to walk away from it completely and just do a strictly digital program. Um, it could be in our future, <laughs> we don't know, but you know, our goal is to, to merge it somehow so that they each enrich, each media enriches the other. Um, we also have been looking, I guess there's something that's a new digital um, tactile tablet, is that what you said? Okay, but one other thing just quickly is um, where you can, uh, the printer, the 3D printer is something we, we would kind of like to be able to offer, but again, it's a matter of getting the machines and getting it together.